Welcome to the SQL Server Fast Execution Plan video training presented by Hugo Cornelis. The third block of this course covers the various ways SQL Server can use to combine data from multiple sources. This block has a strong focus on join operators because they can often be a source of bad performance. Before diving into the operators, we first explain the very important notion of logical join types. A change of join type affects the results that a join operator returns. Many join types are equivalent to a similar T-SQL keyword, such as inner join or left outer join. But even in those cases, the join type in the execution plan does not always match what you wrote in the query. We'll show some examples. We also talk about ways to combine data that are not really joins even though some of them are supported by some of the join operators. Chapter 2 covers the nested loops operator. This operator joins two sources by repeatedly executing the second source, once for each row in the first source. This performs very well when the right conditions are met, but can spiral out of control when there is a bad estimate. You will see the basic algorithm used when a nested loops performs an inner join. You will also see how the outer references property is used to push a value into the second input, making it more efficient, and how this interacts with rebinds and rewinds of that second input. In the third chapter, we discuss merge join. This operator has the most efficient algorithm for joining two tables. But sadly, that algorithm does require that both inputs are sorted. Sometimes the optimizer can find a cheap way to fulfill this requirement. If not, then the required sorting often makes the total cost of the execution plan with merge join too high. We show the algorithm that merge join uses, first based on a flowchart and then once more by visualizing the process with sample data. As always, we will also point out the important properties. Chapter 4 is devoted to joining data with the hash match operator. This operator does not require the input data to be ordered. And though it starts off quite expensive, it scales quite well, so it is often the best choice for joining large sets of data. You'll first learn the basic concepts of hash functions and hash tables. After that, you will see how these are used in hash match to find matching rows as it processes its input data. We'll cover some of the things to look out for when there is a hash match in an execution plan, such as its memory footprint, its blocking behavior, and the risk of spilling to tempdb. In chapter 5, you will learn about the adaptive join operator. This operator is only available in SQL Server 2017 and up, and only in execution plans that use batch mode. The optimizer typically chooses this operator when it can come up with two alternative execution plans, one based on the nested loops and one that uses hash match. Because of how these two algorithms scale, the former tends to be cheaper when the number of rows is low, but the latter is the better choice when there are many rows to process. Adaptive join makes it possible to defer this choice to runtime when the number of rows from the first input is actually known. It can then choose the algorithm to use based on that number of rows. The last chapter is not about joins. It covers three operators that combine data but in different ways. The concatenation operator processes two or more inputs, copying the data from each, one by one, top to bottom, until it has processed all its inputs. The sequence operator also processes all its inputs one by one but it only returns rows it receives from the last input. Data received from other inputs is ignored. In some cases, the interleaved execution feature affects execution plans that use a sequence. Finally, the very rare switch operator that also has two or more inputs executes only exactly one of them. Which one is determined at runtime? Six chapters, for a total viewing time of 3 hours and 45 minutes. That's a lot of content, much more than I can describe in this preview. If you want to see it all, then please check out the basic level of block 3, Combining Data.